What's up guys? We are going to create this cool animation. After watching, you will get the basic knowledge of 3D motion design and how to achieve it in Blender. Let's start by creating a minimalistic architecture, because we want to maximize the viewer's attention on the product, in my case the chair. The link to the chair model is in the description. Create a camera. I will be using vertical resolution. We need an object to grow around the chair. In my case, it's flowers. The link to the marigold model is in the description. Add it underneath the scene so that it doesn't interfere with our work. Let's set up the geometry node for the flower right away. Now let's set up the geometry node for the chair. Create an empty object, it will activate the flower growth as it approaches the chair. Let's create a material for the world, which includes clouds. material for architecture. Also, a light source such as the sun will come in handy. Without shadows, the scene looks flat. But with such lighting, it's a whole different story. The most difficult part of the video begins, animation. There are no perfect values in the subsequent actions. Build the animation according to your needs and objects. I will simply show you how to do it at a professional level, or close to it. Well, let's prepare the soundtrack, since in my case, I will be creating the animation based on music. Open the video sequencer. In it, you can add an object like sound. Then display the waveform by clicking here. Now, place as many markers as you need. You can do this by pressing M. This is how we have placed the markers. For motion design animation videos, I use a lot of cameras because I personally like it. Go to the first marker and press Ctrl plus B. Now the first camera is linked to the marker. Add an object constraint called Track 2. I use these settings. Let's start creating the animation. Open the graph editor. Before we start, let me explain something. If you want to skip the detailed theory, you can go to this timecode. We have three transformation parameters for the object. 
and in each parameter, there are three coordinate parameters that transform the object. Simply changing them won't give us animation. We need to use keyframes. I will now explain a more primitive animation. For example, I want to animate the cube to move 5 meters forward along the X coordinate. I right click on the parameter I want to animate, then click insert single keyframe and then move the cursor slightly forward on the timeline. I change the parameter and then click insert single keyframe again. Now I'll explain about the graph editor. Here we can more deeply adjust the behavior of keyframes while seeing it graphically. If we click on a point, which is a keyframe, we will see the direction guides that create this smooth animation that catches the eye. Do it like this and you'll see what happens with the cube. All of this is applicable to any object, including the camera. Let's go back to the main animation. Right click and insert single keyframe. Then move the cursor somewhere and change the camera position. Right click and insert single keyframe again. Using the guides, adjust the animation speed and get something like this. Repeat this for another axis if necessary. To create a seamless transition between cameras, I usually copy the parameters of the first camera on the frame before the transition to the other camera, so that the camera remains in order. Then we continue animating the cameras in the same way. On the third camera, I want the growth of the flowers to begin. Animate an empty object that controls the growth and you will get the growth effect. It's simple. Around the 300th frame, I want to reverse the animation. I want the video to be looped. For this, we need to bind the first camera to somewhere around here and copy one of the first keyframes. Shift plus D duplicates it. Move these keyframes closer to the last frame. Done. Repeat this with the growth object. That's it. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it.